Well, I'm searching for something in my life. That's how the young man explained his presence at our church. He was searching for something. A recent book calls us North Americans a nation of seekers. In fact, some of the churches I know have a seekers service in which they open the church up for people who are looking for something. We're all looking for a more meaningful life. We're all searching for more purpose-filled lives. Once they asked Jesus, what is God like? And as he so often did, Jesus responded by telling a series of stories. Uh, which one of you, Jesus asked, uh, which one of you shepherds, say has a lost sheep? Will you not leave the 99 sheep in the wilderness and go beat the bushes for that one lost sheep? And when you find that lost sheep, which one of you would not put that sheep on your shoulders and take the sheep back to your friends and say, come party with me, I found my lost sheep? Uh, which one of you women, if you lose a coin, would you not rip all the carpet up off the floor of your home, uh, move all the heavy appliances out in the yard, move all the furniture out on the porch, and when you have found that lost coin, which one of you would not run out into the street and say to your neighbors, come party with me, I found my lost quarter. Now, which one of you would not do that? Uh, which one of you fathers say you have a younger rebellious son? The son says, dad, drop dead. Put the will into effect. Give me the money that will come to me in my inheritance, and I'm out of here. And which one of you would not do just that? Give everything you had to your rebellious son. He leaves. He goes. He squanders all of the money. He comes back home in rags. And which one of you would not say to him, Harold, you wanted a party? I'll show you a party. Now, now which one of you would not do that? Well, <laughs> of course, the answer is none of us would do that. That's crazy. And then Jesus, the teller of these stories, says, oh, excuse me, these are not stories about the way you behave. These are stories about the way God behaves. Get it? God is the seeking shepherd, the searching woman, the waiting, inviting father. Oh, how that definition of God collides with our contemporary understandings of God what is God like? Oh, God is um, large, uh, distant, very, very distant, uh, up there, out there somewhere. Uh, God is the one that uh, got the world started and uh, set up certain natural laws, and the world is functioning just fine, thank you, and God then retired. Well, Jesus speaks of a God who seeks and searches and finds. I uh, remind you of the context of these stories of the lost sheep and the lost coin and the lost boy. They said to Jesus, why do you always hang out with sinners? You're always eating and getting drunk with sinners. Uh, what kind of religious person are you? After all, what's the point of religion except to separate out people, the sinful from the righteous? What are you doing with these sinners? And in response, Jesus says, I came to seek and to save the lost. Now, that's a very different view of God and uh, a very different view of ourselves. When most of us are thinking about ourselves, we'll say things like, uh, well, you, you see, I'm searching for something, or I'm here because I'm looking for God. Well, fine. But that's not the way the Bible tells it, usually. In the Bible... We're usually looking for any way to get away from God, and it's God that's looking for a way to get to us. Jesus Christ, Christians believe, is God's supreme act of coming close to us, of seeking and searching us out until God finds us. Annie Dillard uh, is a great American writer, and in her book about her life growing up in Pittsburgh, she was a smart young woman. By the age of 15, she'd read through all the books in the Carnegie branch of the Pittsburgh Library near her home. And uh, reading those books, she decided that all this religion stuff is bunk and God doesn't really exist. And 
So she took it upon herself at age 15 to show up at Shadyside Presbyterian Church, and she said to her aging pastor, I want my name off the roll. I don't believe in God anymore. And the pastor said, uh, okay. And Annie Dillard said, you're not going to try to argue me out of it? Uh, uh, and he said, no, 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 you're too smart for me. I, there's no way I could argue you back into this. So she said, now I want my name off the roll. He said, I said, it's off the roll. And she said, oh, okay. She walked out of the minister's office and on her way down the hall, she heard him mutter to himself out loud, she'll be back. She wheeled around, she went back into the office and she said, what did I hear you say? And he said, oh, I just said, uh, I presume that you'll probably be back. And she said, look, this is my life. I live my life like I want to live my life. I'm not coming back. Well, Annie Dillard wrote in her life story, as I write this, I'm 48 years old and I'm back. You see, when we're telling the story of us and God, we, we've got to talk about the God that came to us in Jesus Christ, the one that doesn't leave it all up to us. It's not over between us and God till God says it's over. God is not the one who sets up the rules and puts out the standards and says, now here's the bar, chin up to it if you can. No, God is the one that seeks and searches and finds. And Jesus says there in Luke 15, if just one of these sinners gets caught in the great dragnet of God's grace, Heaven just goes crazy. Thank God our relationship to God is not all up to us. Thank God that we, we not only have a God that loves us as we are, but seeks us out where we are. Uh, a couple of Sundays ago, I came out of church, I was talking to this woman and she said, uh, well, actually, I've only been a member of this church for about six months. And I said, uh, oh, really? Well, uh, that, that's interesting. Uh, uh, why did you decide to come back to church after being away from church so much of your life? And she said, well, I really didn't decide to come back to church. I really got dragged back in here. I said, who did that? And she said, well, I had spent so much of my life trying to get away from God, but then I went through this nasty divorce and um, God cornered me and grabbed me and, well, here I am. Now, what this says to me is, based on Luke 15 and the stories of the seeking shepherd and the searching woman and the waiting father, uh, maybe you're trying to get away from God. Maybe, well, all I got to say about that is, as you go through your life, um, Keep looking over your shoulder, okay?